What's up, guys? David Rule Two and Two, and it's List Day. Ah, yes, List Day. We are getting back into my series of the best cards in the main sets of the game after our short hiatus, after our big special of Beep Cyber Dark Impact. So let's continue on our GX journey with Strike of Neos. Rules for every list apply, as always. Kinda, maybe. We're gonna try to look at the set just as a set, but as we go forward, we find ourselves getting stuck into more and more archetypes. So we kind of have to consider outside support and aging of the cards and future things and all that other stuff. So we need to be a little more open-minded. Without further ado, let's get started with Strike of Neos. First up for number 10 is Gene Warped War Wolf. It's a level four vanilla 2K beater. A Beast Warrior, it's tanky. Okay, it's a beast stick. Number nine. Cloak and Dagger. Here's a card I forgot existed. Cloak and Dagger is a continuous spell that says you can declare one monster type and if your opponent would summon that monster, you can banish that monster and this card. It's kind of a more, uh, I don't know, aggressive prohibition but it only works once i kind of like the card the neat little floodgate uh <sighs> it's not the greatest thing in the world but this set's certainly a gx set so cloak and dagger it's a neat effect it's certainly a weird effect it's neat number eight is ancient rules Ancient Rules, the meme card that basically makes Yu-Gi-Oh's play like season one from the anime where you don't have to tribute for stuff. Basically, Ancient Rules is a normal spell that says you can special summon one level five or higher normal monster from your hand. It's a neg one, but it gets you a blue eyes white dragon on board. So if you're playing dual links, it's not so bad. <sighs> GX. Apparently Watt Tail Dragon is on this card, I guess. Grand Master of the Six Samurai. Ah, uh, yes, there was a bunch of six Sams in this set, so that's cool. Uh, the Discord had a bit of a bit of a controversy about which one would be on here. Would it be Sheehan or would it be Grand Master? Uh, I think Grand Master has aged better, and this is why. You can only control one Grand Master of the Six Samurai. If you control a Six Samurai monster, you can special summon this monster from your hand. And if he's killed by an opponent's card effect, you can add a Six Samurai monster from your graveyard back to your hand. Okay, cool. Really what we care about is the fact it just kind of summons itself as long as you control another 6M. That's just good link spamming material and this is like eventually a, what is it? Uh, they both have an XC and a Synchro. So yeah, uh, spamming the field for your 6M plays and then going into your extra deck is definitely an option for this deck. So a card like this is going to age a little better than uh, was it Xi'an, who is just kind of a clumsy floodgate. So we gave it to him, although you could probably swap either position because they both have their functions. Number six is Pulling the Rug. Ah, I've talked about Pulling the Rug before. Pulling the Rug is an interesting counter trap card that reads, negate the activation of an effect monster's effect when it is normal summoned, and then destroy that monster. Basically, a more aggressive bottomless trap hole. I like it. Being a counter means it's a little harder for your opponent to respond to it and uh, the fact that it hits effect monsters that activate effects on normal summon means that it can actually stop certain things that like something like bottomless can't. Obviously like Solemn Morning's probably better because it just stops the summon in general. However there are certain instances in the game where negating the effect of the monster and killing it but not actually negating the summon might actually be beneficial like if there's a monster that can only be summoned once per turn and then getting the summon your opponent might be able to by wording of the card summon another so there are interesting applications for this card it's kind of neat and it was a uh, a fun like monarch uh anti-attack i guess against uh some of their effects and things i'm kind of reaching it's a cool card though it just it's one of those cards that it, it needs a very specific format to be a, a good tech choice the Transmigration Prophecy. This card actually, I think, spent some time on the ban list or limited, which is interesting because I, 
Just looking at it, you wouldn't know why. It's a normal trap card that reads, target two cards in the graveyard, shuffle them into their deck. Cool thing is you can hit cards in your opponent's grave or you can hit cards in your grave and as a spell speed too, you can chain it to things like uh, activated effects in the grave and things like that, that like call a haunted that targets them in the grave to make it whiff, things like that. It's actually an interesting, nifty little trap card that uh, back in the day I think was being used to loop stuff. So that's a thing. Uh, it's probably not, it's super unviable now, which is why this is a three, but I think a, there was a combo I'm not positive off the top of my head and I don't care enough to look it up and to and well and pause the camera and, and then and then tell you guys you Google trans trans I am really tired today. This video is going to stink. I can't wait to edit this. Number four is Advanced Ritual Art. Here we go, here's a card I can actually talk about and make it sound like I know what I'm talking about. It's a ritual spell. The cool thing about Advanced Ritual Art, or ARA, is that you can use it to ritual summon most ritual monsters in this game unless otherwise stated on the ritual monster it can only be ritual summoned by its appropriate uh, ritual spell. So there's a giant pool of monsters you can use this card with, which is neat because uh, sometimes simply having an extra copy of your ritual spell is exactly what the consistency in your deck needs. The other nifty thing about this is how the card actually pays its ritual tribute. Instead of making you spend monsters on the field or in your hand as tribute for the ritual summon, it actually lets you mill out of your deck a monster of the same level as the monster you're trying to summon. And the even niftier part about that is it doesn't have to necessarily be one monster for one, like milling a level 8 monster out of your deck for a level 8 uh, ritual <laughs> for a synchro. For a level 8 synchro, damn it! Level 8 ritual summon. You can mill as many monsters as you want as long as their level equals the one you're trying to summon. Meaning you can mill a bunch of guys out of your deck. Only stipulation is they need to be normal monsters. So you're running a lot of garnets for this card to work, but if your deck is already running some sort of garnet, like literally garnet or something like that, there is some added synergy to that and you can use it to get those copies of the card out of your deck. Obviously the modern deck that would probably consider, I don't know if it actually does, but that would at least consider a copy of this would be something like Blue Eyes because Chaos Max is a level eight dragon. I'm pretty sure. And obviously Blue Eyes is a level 8 normal monster, meaning you can summon your Chaos Max Dragon by milling a Blue Eyes to your grave, where it can now be resurrected by something like Azure or your Silver's Cry, which is nifty synergy white lightning attack. So yeah, this card's actually pretty solid. Uh, I think it's Nito's. So here you go. It's the best card in the game. It's not really though. Why am I doing that? I need to go to bed. Number three is Dark World Dealings. Each player draws one card, then discards one card. The interesting thing about Dark World Dealings is to make one. For your opponent, they, they go even. That's not a neat thing. That's a lame thing. However, it does let you cycle cards through your deck, but more importantly, it discards by effect not for cost, meaning if you're playing this in something like your Dark Worlds, which is actually relevant right now, it gets their effects off. <laughs> it's a great draw spell in your Danger Dark World FTK, you jack off. But obviously the card does have some interesting use in other draw solitaire decks and things like that, but it obviously has its best home in decks like Dark Worlds that actually want to be the grave and get off by discarding. So that's kind of neat, and to not include it on the list would be a disservice because this card's seen tons of play from Exodia to FTKs to all those others, hooey. So there you go. Dark World Dealings. Number two is Decro. Quick effect, you can discard this card from your hand to target one card in the graveyard, either player's graveyard, and banish that card. Ah yes, one of the OG hand traps. DD Crow is amazingly disruptive, it's aged extremely well, and it's great for the exact same reason why your Transmigration Prophecy is great, except the fact that it is a hand trap means it's a lot harder to stop and it is active going second. Now how could this possibly not be number one? Uh, probably because I really like number one and I might be making an executive decision, but it probably should be number one because I think it's objectively a better card. So take that information how you will. But yes, I love me some DD Crow. It's actually searchable now by one of the, what is it, the Laralus XC monsters. So that's kind of neat, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't come up much anymore because I think we lost the combo in which you'd actually be able to do that. However, it is a solid hand trap. It's 
more budget than things like Ash Blossom, and it's just as nice of a hand trap, it, although its use is a little different. So if you're looking to maybe give your deck a bit of a competitive edge and you don't want to actually completely break the bank, but you still want to have that going second versatility, uh, then yeah, DD Crow is certainly a great option, and this card has aged like absolute the best, finest wine. Ah, it's nice to see a good card that just gets better, you know? DD Crow. We're not gonna do any honorable mentions because this uh, this set was really hard to get to get to it, and I really really want to spend the time for the honorable mention. I'm gonna spend the time on the dishonorable mention. Neospatian Glow Moss. I almost don't want to read this card because I think you guys should really should look this card up, read its effect, and really experience it for yourself because it's legendarily terrible. So let's go. If this card is attacked or is attacked, your opponent draws one card. It does not matter what the rest of this card effect says, that alone should tell you the card is absolutely terrible. You never, ever, ever want to give your opponent cards for free. Even if you are playing a cheesy deck with like your uh, Lycoris and, and you're doing, trying to do some burn by making them draw and crap. Even that is a horribly risky strategy because you're giving your opponent more outs or potential outs to whatever cheesy stupid burn loop you are trying to do. So very, very, very holds true when it's a bad card like Glow Moss, you do not want to give your opponent cards. The only thing you could say about this is that it happens during the battle phase, so the likelihood of your opponent being able to use that card at least immediately is a little bit lower, unless it's like a quick play spell or a hand trap or something, but uh, they can just go to main phase two. This isn't dual inks. So you probably made a bad situation worse if this thing is being attacked, and if you're trying to attack with this card, I have no idea what you're trying to do. Granted, I don't really know how this deck works, so maybe there's a weird combo where you want to try to crash Glow Moss into something. Uh, it couldn't possibly be good, but anyway, there are more effects to this card. Remember that card your opponent draws when this thing gets into battle? They have to reveal it, so that's a thing. And then, this thing does something depending on what that card is, whether it's a monster, spell, or trap. If it is a monster, you end the battle phase. Okay. <sighs> So, uh, you have a, what, a decent chance in modern Yu-Gi-Oh to just end the battle phase if this thing is attacked? That's a thing, I suppose. If the card that they drew with a spell card, and this thing was the card doing the attacking, you can change this attack into a direct attack, which is what I was referring to before. Uh, I don't know if Glow Moss FTK is a deck. I'm hedging my bets that it is not. However, it will never work. You're better off doing something like Mystic Lamp FTK. There you go. That's an attack direct guy, I think. And if it's a trap, you change this thing to defense position, meaning uh, it could really bum out your attack. <laughs> Basically, if you attack with this thing, your opponent reveals a trap card. It's like they had a trap card, and it puts them in defense position. And that's dumb. And if it is attacked, your opponent gets a, a free trap card. And this thing was probably in defense mode anyway. I'm also having a hard time explaining why this card is bad, because it really should be pretty obvious. You never give your opponent stuff, and if you are going to give your opponent something, the effect needs to be absurd, and none of these are even remotely close to that. So, Glow Moss, you stink. Obviously, yes, uh, I will acknowledge that it's part of a fusion, so it does have some bonus function there, however, uh, no. And before we get to number one, obviously it is a list, so we have our sponsor, MetaMats. Ah, yes, MetaMats. If you guys want a custom cloth playmat, just go over to their website, use my promo code TROLLTHEMETA to get, uh, what is it, 10? Is it 10%? I think it's 10%. Off your purchase, it helps the channel, it helps out MetaMats, and it helps you because you actually have a decent playmat. Because I know what you guys are playing on. You're playing on that thing that comes with the starter decks, that piece of paper. Nah, man, don't, don't do that. Don't do that in the penny sleeves. <laughs> Unless you want to take a really expensive meta deck to a regional or something and play with the paper mac and the penny sleeves. That would be, that would be really funny. It, but only if you're really good at the deck, because that would be trolly. But, but don't do that. It'll ruin your cards. For a, for a meme, no. Get a, get a meta mat. They're really nice. They're all I use. Number one is Neospatian Grand Mole. Uh, because Glow Moss was so bad, I figured giving the number one swat, number one swat, number one spot to Grand Mole was only fair. However, Grand Mole has also spent some time on the Forbidden Limited list, so he has a good argument for being number one. However, DD Crow is also a really, 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 really powerful card, so you could swap either of these two to make yourselves happy. 
do what you want. Don't add me in the comments. Neospatian Grand Mole is a level three earth, uh, rock. It's a rock. I almost said beast, but then I was like, no, I don't think it is. I think I remember reading it and going, oh, it's not a beast. That's super weird. Yeah, it's a rock. <laughs> Why is it a rock? I guess it's a mole, right? So it's in the earth, like dirt. So like rocks. So it's either a beast or a rock, but it's an earth attribute. So it should just be a beast because moles are beasts of the earth. Not really a rock. It's probably so you can't search it as well. Grand Mole, what does he do? At the start of damage step of this card, battles another monster. You can return this card and that monster it's fighting back to the hand. Ah, yes. Grand Mole Control. Best deck in the world. No, not really. However, there is a really, really solid little uh, break a board maneuver. It's a little harder to stop because it doesn't target. And uh, if your opponent can't stop you from entering your battle phase, poking into their board with Grand Mole has been for a very long time a decent way at cherry picking at your opponent's board to get rid of the most problem monster. Also, he is like broke a dope combos with kaijus. Main phase one, kaiju your opponent's guy, attack the kaiju with him during the battle phase, bounce that kaiju back, and then kaiju something else. Main phase two is broke. And I really like that combo. It's a good combo. <laughs> Grand Mole is just really fun. Uh, he's one of my favorite cards actually in the game because I really like these really, really impactful normal summon monsters like Thunder King Ryo or or uh, Grand Mole, or uh, Tsukiyomi. Just these cards that immediately hit the field and do something really impactful. I just think they're fun. I always would love to build a combo deck like old school Yu-Gi-Oh's and just have a bunch of different ones in the deck and use them at the right time with a bunch of power spells, kind of like Go Format. I just apparently just want to play Go Format, but ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Grand Mole is, is too old for that, but, or too new for that, but you, you know what I mean. Uh, I like me some Grand Mole, so there you go. But anyway, guys that was strike of neo it's not the worst set in the world it's pretty middle of the road it's not as bad as gx has given us but it's certainly unremarkable uh it's kind of why i've been like i don't want to do this list I got other stuff to do because it's boring so i just blew through it as ho hopefully as fast as i could but anyways let me know guys below what you guys think of strike of neos and remember guys if you don't draw the video well i'll see you guys next time for whatever the next list is i haven't looked that far ahead No time left in the video, I summon Dark Magician, declare direct attack. Subscribe for vids? Told you I was the master.